де-факто ми вже пройшли свій шлях в НАТО. Де-факто ми вже довели взаємосумісність зі стандартами Альянсу. Вони реальні для України, реальні на полі бою і в усіх аспектах нашої взаємодії. Ми довіряємо один одному, ми допомагаємо один одному і ми захищаємо один одного. Це і є Альянс. Де-факто. Сьогодні Україна подає заявку, щоб зробити це де-юре, за процедурою, яка відповідатиме нашому значенню для захисту всієї нашої спільноти у пришвидшеному порядку. Period. And we can't say no to Putin because we sold our soul for his oil and gas. And we did that to elevate our moral stature in relationship to saving the planet. And so here we are yeah. facing a very dire winter, hoisted on the petard of our own foolishness and moral presumption. We're saving the planet. We'll see. I don't think so. It doesn't look like it to me. And this is, this is the most catastrophic issue here. Assuming that we're facing an environmental crisis of planetary proportions, which is not something I buy, by the way, assuming we are, well, then I would imagine that you would put in place measures that would ameliorate that problem instead of exacerbating it. But all the measures you're putting in place are actually making the environmental problem worse. So how is that? even vaguely acceptable. And I look at that and I think, oh, I see, it's just like George Orwell said about middle-class socialists 50 years ago. It's not that you love the planet, it's that you hate humanity. So, well, have at her, boys and girls, and we'll see what happens this winter. And it's very terrifying to me, it is. especially here, you know, because your energy prices have gone way out of control and that's gonna hurt a lot of poor people. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly around the world as well, the world, bank already estimated that we've put 350 million people into what they call a food insecurity, 350 million. That's three times as many as the communists managed to kill. Maybe we can manage that in a winter. But the planet has too many people on it anyway, so, you know. You know, last week, I should say over the weekend, rather, this past weekend, like the, the first weekend of uh, September was coming to the close into the first weekend of October. And it's Wednesday, uh, October 5th. I feel very concerned. And something that I witnessed actually spooked me. I was really was spooked by what I saw. I was spooked by two things now 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 the first thing happened i expected to happen and you know and and it's concerning the ukraine the russia ukrainian war and and i'm looking at now i expected vladimir putin to annex the uh the four the four or five um eastern parts of ukraine's uh regions uh oblast was what i think that's the word into into the russia federation justifying uh or proving the world's point about what his his intentions are but that wasn't enough right that wasn't enough so this kind of gives out the idea of the movie some of all fears now 
there, there's a really re reason why I'm, I'm using this movie as a backdrop. Tom Clancy, for all intents and purposes, Tom Clancy wrote a book called The Sum of All Fears. Now, if you watch the movie, the movie has a little, the plot is a little bit different because they changed the the origins of, of the of the villain or the or the terrorist cell that was in the movie that was in the book and if you watch that movie the movie was about nazi organized not nazi groups nazi organizations in europe huddled together to um start a war between the United States and Russia and whoever uh because with the in hopes with the hopes of Russia and United States would annihilate what one another to the point that Europe <clears throat> should they survive the conflict will be brought under a new world order by Nazi slash fascist governments. That's if you, if you watch the movie, some of all fears. Now in the book itself, it was Arabs. It was an Arab terrorist group that was trying to fight. that was trying to create a war so that so that the so that they can have a great uh ne Nebuchadnezzar or type type figure can collect that can just take over the entire Arab middle slash Middle, middle East world. Well nonetheless now now there is a group called um Azos, Azos. Well, I've, I can't pronounce the name. Y'all, you know, correct me if I'm wrong with the name. Azos is a uh, neo-Nazi group, and many white supremacists in in Canada, United States, Great Britain, they go to the Ukraine to train with these white supremacists, this white supremacist group within within Ukraine. And before the war started, Vladimir Putin was correct in this regard, in, in this in this disregard that there are Nazis in the Ukraine that he wants to take out. Now he is correct on that. But what's troubling me is that over the weekend, Friday night. Friday, Saturday, that the president of Ukraine stood there with two other men outside and signed a document. Now, when he signed that document, I looked at I looked at it. What what was the document was supposed to be about? And I'm looking. I'm looking at it like, okay, you willing to? Is is already bad enough though? Your country's being invaded. But why would you sign a document for an application to join NATO? Knowing the fact by joining NATO, in response of Vladimir Putin collecting or annexing four of your provinces would include the entire world being engulfed in flames. That should be a blunder. That that's if it's not a military blunder, this should be a political blunder. So, President 
uh, Izisky, uh, 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 Risky, I can't, can't pronounce his name. He actually put the world on notice, just justifying Putin's justifying Putin's reason to be at war rather than pay no attention to to the rep, to the referendum to have the four provinces to be annexed into Russia and Val and Putin just said Vladimir Putin just said just made a threat that he was willing to use all of the available nuclear we weapons to defend the Russian homeland. Thus, mean does mean since those provinces are now quote unquote now part of um, Russia now, well, any invasion, any attack will will. Well, means though well he's going to use nukes, and by you and by him signing a document to join NATO, well, Putin going to say, well, it, listen, y'all was going, y'all was expanding, y'all was expanding eastward into my borders. I can't have you do that. See, I really blame this. On the past four presidents, like Biden, Trump, Obama, Bush, and yes, let me and let me add in Clinton. Clinton no, next Clinton. Clinton was there, and and Papa Bush. I know. Well, it's five, right? I blame them for all this because. The Russians have been saying this since, since the 1980s. Stop expanding NATO eastwardly. Stop dis disrespecting their, their sovereignty. And another another thing, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this with with Jordan Peterson. Say, I'm, I'm gonna do that on the next next video. But uh, but yeah, um, this is frightening me. But people was warned. Tall Tulsi Gabbard warned the Democrats during the 2020 debate. Y'all did not listen. To her, Ron Paul, Ron Paul, who ran for president in 2008 and in 2012, warned y'all not to do it. But y'all didn't listen to him. People, people have been warning not to do, not to expand NATO eastwardly. Patrick Buchanan, who is a racist bigot. A closet white supremacist. Even he said, don't expand NATO eastward. And now look. It's been a hundred years. It's been at least a little bit over. A hundred years since the Versailles Treaty to be enacted, because the because the Treaty of Versailles was signed in nineteen I want to say nineteen 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 twenty nineteen twenty one something like that. It's amazing that people don't even learn what happened. What happened in, uh, you know, when when that war happened, how, how that war started. Recriminations. Not 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 respecting the other person's boundaries. 
you know, when when the Cold War ended, the hand of friendship should have been extended out to the Boris Yeltsin in his administration. There should have been clo closer ties with the Russians. Now, granted, Boris Yeltsin quit. Vladimir Putin came in, granted. But instead of sitting there and, and try to poo-poo on Russia, there should have been more dip, dip, diplomatic avenues to work things out. And it seems like, to me, it seems like to me that the um, that none that none of, of our leaders in the Western world, like Boris Johnson, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Trust, Joe Biden, um, Frank Cone, Angela Merkel. Uh, that new leader in Germany. None of them actually sit there. And Justin Trudeau up in Canada, though, by the way, none of them sit there and actually read. You see, though, they never learn. Or never read. That book called the book called the guns of August. Well, see that book, the gun, the guns of August. And and um, the guns of August was about the lack of communication between the European Entente and that of the Central Powers before the First World War started. And during the final weeks of the of peace, quote unquote. There was numerous people trying their best, sending telegraphs and tele and telegraphs and 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 letters and dip, dip, diplomatic pouches, trying to uh, avert the incoming conflict. But because of the of the stupidity of the political leaders. And that of some of the, and the hardness, the hard headedness, rather, of the military elite in Germany, in France, and the United Kingdom, the war started. And those, and those leaders who were trying to find a way out of it was shut out the same way the same way people were shut out like Ron Paul was shut out Tulsi Galbert was shut out some people within the Green Party was shut out some people within the Libertarian Party was shut out uh, when concerning this matter because a lot of people have seen what was about to happen and now we're witnessing we're now witnessing a conflict that could spill over and engulf the entire, not only Europe, but the entire North American continent. And possibly in, into all off far as to South Korea, Japan and in in Taiwan, down to Australia and in, in, in New Zealand. So, who is to blame here? Well, let me tell you who is to blame. Yes, I'm, I'll, I'll blame I blame our current lead leadership in the Western world. But who put who put them in office? 
Well, let me tell you who put them in office. We did. Yes, we did. We put these individuals in office while, you know, because we paid too much attention to flashy slogans. This veneer of tough talkness. People who who show a, a lot of passion. That's supposed to be a sign of strength, but compassion is seen as weakness. We vote on, oh, who is tall? Who's tall in height? Yet, though, we never vote for people who, who has a sound policy. We look for slogans and bumper sticker arguments, talking points. But yet we never ask. We never ask, well, what is your idea for peace? What is your idea for to fight poverty? We never ask these questions. We look at slogans. We look at bump, bump, bumper stickers say, yeah, yeah, Trump 2020. Oh, yeah, Biden. Build back better. And it's all harking back to what. To what uh, Jordan Peterson said. And Jordan Peterson says something, though. That. I've been saying for a very long time about this, about this conflict. And that is. Since there's no gasoline, no petroleum. Uh, petroleum being banned in those northern countries. But they have to depend on Russia for the source of their energy. Now, since they're in this quasi war with, with the Russians. So I have to, I have to sit here and, and wonder, how's that going to work out? Because on that tip, is this so you're gonna fight a country or be at in a quasi war war against the Russians when the Russians can have the life and death death uh concerning you in win winter time during during the holidays when it's gonna get cold in northern northern parts of Europe it's gonna get cold. So that tells me that either Western countries going to do two things. One, they're going to either allow people to starve out there cold. Or they're going to fight war against Russia to attain that, that resource. Because, it's, because it takes a mighty long time for an American ship or a Canadian ship. To reach the so the shores of Europe to get oil and gasoline and any any source of energy that that coal mining that that the coal mining of um within West Virginia and and Appalachia areas is going to take them two three weeks to get oil from Texas. It's going to take them four or five months to get nat natural resources from Alaska. Depending on how Alaska, how the Alaska is going to ship, ship the oil around Canada or drew Canada into a east side port. And even that will be endangered. Should Europe exercise its military 
uh, prowess against Russia because Alaska is sitting right on R Russia's back backyard. Make that make sense. So I'm assuming though they want to depopulate the planet. That's what I think. Y'all should listen to Tossy Galbert. Y'all should have listened to to Ron Paul. Y'all should have listened to to uh, Spike Cohen and and and, and uh, uh, I forgot I forgot forgot her name name for a moment. Y'all should y'all should li listen to them from the get go. Anyway, I said enough. And I'm gonna wait till this internet to come back on because they shut down the internet uh, all over the place. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm out in peace.